So, this is what I'm reduced to. Cold and wet whilst providing maritime security on a freighter that's heading to the other side of the world. Well, that's what happens when you lose everything, I suppose. At least this way I get free passage to the Sawyer Islands, and once I get there I can try and sell that damn island I was given when the company I invested in went bankrupt. Anyway, there's no point dwelling on it. I'd better check on this vessel we spotted earlier. Yeah, it's just a small fishing vessel. A lobster trawler from the looks of it. Captain Warner tried to get them on the radio a few times, but the reception was awful. We could barely make them out. Let's face it, if they were pirates, they'd most likely be using something faster and be coming at us from astern. Besides, they'd most likely strike during the night, even in weather like this. Samuels? A bit cold and dark in here, isn't it? Uh, I don't recall to women like you. Ha! Well, you could pretend to be the hard man all you like, but I'd rather not freeze my bollocks off, thank you very much. Now, he might come across as a bit of a cantankerous old bugger, but apparently he's like that with everyone to begin with. Hey, Skipper. Yeah, it looks like it's just a lobster trawler, nothing to worry about. Listen, I've noticed that we've turned and are now heading northeast. I thought our course was to take us southeast to the Sawyer Islands. Is everything okay? <laughs> You're a sharp one, ain't you? Should have figured you'd noticed being a captain and all. Yeah, we got a storm coming our way tonight, and I was trying to stay clear of the worst of it before it hits. Oh, wonderful. Hey, relax. Just you wait till tomorrow. The forecast is for snow. Well, that is kind of to be expected, since it is the middle of winter. Anyway, I bet I go and get some rest. My watch finished ten minutes ago, and Ingram's got the next one. The only thing is that this slight deviation in course means that we'll most likely reach the Sawyer Islands tomorrow in the afternoon rather than the early morning. But hey, it's just a few extra hours, and the office I'm going to should still be open anyway. Right, time to get some sleep. Something tells me I've got a long day ahead of me tomorrow. Ah, so much for getting a good night's sleep. Seriously, last night it felt like this ship has done more rocking and rolling than sodding Aerosmith. Yep, it's still pretty choppy out there, and it's not showing any sign of slowing down anytime soon. That rain's gotten a lot worse too, so I'd better switch out this bulky, yet surprisingly buoyant pleat carrier for something a little more appropriate. Ah, there we go. This will do nicely. I'm a little early, so Ingram will still be on watch, but that's okay. What I might do is let him off a few minutes early if things stay quiet this morning, especially if the weather stays like this. Hmm, I am tempted to grab something to eat, but I think I'll wait until later before I get my breakfast, as I'm really just not that hungry yet. Actually, that's not too bad. The seas are a little rough, but I have seen worse. Hey, Skipper, anything exciting to report? Yeah, something came up on the radar earlier. Should be back where we are now, but it vanished. Probably just noise. Or a bungelling attack submarine that's just dived to attack us. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Quit marking with me and get out there and make sure we don't hit some goddamn picnic boat. <laughs> I'm on it. Yeah, Warner's all right. If a surname sounds familiar, it's most likely because it is. He's part of the famous, or should that be infamous, Warner family. In fact, it's F.J. Warner, who's either his cousin or second cousin, that owns Warner Shipbuilding Incorporated and that huge harbour on northeast Meyer Island, just south of the Sawyer Islands. Although I've got a feeling he's not quite as well off as his other relatives. Still, it was good of him to hire me as a favour to help me travel over to this part of the world. Sorry, Skipper, I can't see... What the hell was that? A whale? I don't know. Could be. Ah, this could be good. I've only seen one whale so far, and that was shortly after this voyage began, and it was quite far away. This one sounds a lot closer. 
Shame it's so dark, though. Hopefully I'll be able to catch it as it breaches the surface. Now that would be something. Not seeing any vessels out here, so that radar contact probably was just a false echo. There it is again. I'm still not seeing anything on the surface, so the whale must be underneath us somewhere. Either that or I'm just looking in the wrong direction. <laughs> you see, it's times like these when I wish I brought my night vision goggles with me. Okay, now that sounds eerily close this time. Should we be getting worried? Oh shit! That's not a whale! Ah! <coughs> what in the hell? It's a giant squid! What? No! Ah, oh, son of a... Ah, the lifeboat. I need to get to the lifeboat. Ah. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What the hell was that thing? I mean, it looked like a giant squid, but that thing was gigantic. Shit, I need some light. Oh, good grief. The crew. Captain Warner. Ingram. Klein. Damn it. I want to stay and search for them, but I can't risk hanging around. I don't know if any of them even made it. And most importantly, I have no idea whether or not that thing is going to come back for seconds. No, my best chances of survival lie in using this hand crank to take this lifeboat southeast towards the Sawyer Islands. If I'm lucky, I might come across another vessel or one of the inhabited islands around the coast. I just hope I don't attract the attention of that sea monster again, which is why I dare not to use any flares. It's bad enough that this boat is moving, but if I'm lucky, it's small and quiet enough that it'll just think I'm debris and leave me alone. <laughs> Otherwise, this could be a very short voyage indeed. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be using this flashlight either. That's just tempting fate. So far, so good. I don't want to jinx it, but I think I might have managed to get away. If the creature was going to attack again, surely it would have done so already. All that's left now is to try and find help before I either die of starvation or bloody freeze to death. I've been paddling for hours, but there's still no sign of any other vessels. Oh, hang on a second. That looks like land. Nice one. It's an island and it's even got some trees and maybe even a house on it. Right, I need to try and get there as fast as I can and see if I can find anyone that can help. It's still raining quite heavily, but the wind's dropped, so if I'm lucky I won't be fighting against the current as I make my way there. The thing is, that island is still quite far away, and this lifeboat, well, it doesn't exactly go very fast. So, this could take a while. Almost there, Captain. Just a little further and I'll be safely ashore. I just need to find somewhere to land this thing. 
There's too many steep rocks on the side, but if I can find a gentler slope, or maybe even a beach, then that would be absolutely fantastic. There's been no further sign of our tentacled friend, but I very much doubt it would venture into waters that are this shallow. That giant squid, <laughs> or kraken as I now call it, most likely prefers the deeper parts of the ocean, just like its smaller cousins. Damn, once I get back to civilization, just how the hell am I going to explain all this? It's not as if anyone's going to believe me when I tell them that the Greenick was attacked and sunk by a giant sea monster. They'd have me in a straitjacket and locked away for good. They'll probably even claim this video was faked using CGI or something as part of a great big hoax. Oh well, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Aha, I could be in luck. That looks like a beach over there. I just need to bring this lifeboat around slightly and land it up there as quickly and as safely as I can. I need to be careful not to get this thing stuck on any rocks or have it swept back out to sea, as there's a whole bunch of rescue equipment on it that I'd rather not lose. There we go. That should do us. It looks rather desolate from this side, so the house must be just behind that rise. Anyway, first things first, now that it's safe to do so, I'd better launch a flare. That way, if anyone's nearby, they'll know that I'm calling for help. Excellent. I'm not sure if anyone will be close enough to see that, but the added bonus is that flare also illuminates the area around me, which is very handy when it's as cold, dark and miserable as it is right now. Right, time to explore this island and see what it has to offer. Seabirds, apparently. Ah, those are the branches of the trees I saw earlier. Now, I was hoping there was a path around to the house from this side, but apparently not. So, it looks like I'm going to have to try and climb my way over. On second thoughts, I'm probably better off going the other way. And just as Captain Warner predicted, it's starting to snow. Wonderful. That is a rather dead looking tree. Hmm, speaking of dead, a couple of graves. Well, shit. It wasn't a house, it's just a ruin, and from the looks of it, quite an old one too. Which kind of suggests that no one has lived here for quite some time. Damn it. Well, may as well take a look and see if there's anything else I can find out here. Oh, hang on. There is a cave back there, but I've just spotted something on those rocks. It looks like it could be the remains of a boat of some sort. I need to get a closer look. Actually, that thing looks relatively intact. I'm guessing it's either been washed ashore or run aground at some point. Yep, looks like it's been run aground. The underside's all torn up. I've also noticed the metal railings on the starboard side are all rusted up, so it's obviously been sitting there for a while. Holy crap, it's the Moby Det! This is the Warner family sports fishing motor yacht that went missing a few months ago. 
I do remember asking Warner what happened to it, but he never gave me a straight answer. He just went worryingly quiet and started whistling a rather sad sea shanty with a faraway look in his eyes. So I just figured that it sank, either by accident or, uh, well, most likely as part of an insurance scam. But obviously not, because here it is. Anyway, let's see what state it's in. The wheelhouse looks fairly intact, even with that door being left open. That's good. It still has about a third of its fuel left, and there's even a little bit of charge left in those batteries. And it looks like the electrics are working fine. Brilliant. Almost all the rescue equipment is gone, though. Damn, I could have used a welder to try and repair the damage outside. Uh-huh. What's this? A cheap-looking plastic trophy fish. The inscription under it reads, The one that got away. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess the owner had a sense of humour. Ah, no flooding. The bilge pumps must be working. Excellent. What's this? The controls on this microwave appear to be more complex than those used to pilot this boat. <laughs> well, that's about right these days. This fridge freezer is completely empty, save for a few leftover boxes that once held six packs of cheap booze. Ah, so that's like most sports fish yachts then. This cupboard appears to be filled with out-of-date cans of Spam. Oh, delicious. Ah, that's nifty. The seats convert into a berth, giving you somewhere to sleep. Nice one. A defibrillator and a first aid kit. This toilet hasn't been cleaned in years, and it's highly likely that you'll catch something nasty just from sitting on it. Oh, gads. I guess I'll be dumping a gallon of bleach and hosing that out later on. That's if I ever need to use it. Anyway, on to more pleasant things. Let's check out this engine, shall we? Oh, hey, that looks like it's in excellent condition. I reckon if I could somehow repair the damage to the underside, rudder and props, I could get this thing to work. My only other concern would be that the fuel has gotten contaminated with seawater, as well as how the hell I'm going to move the Moby Debt back into the sea from these rocks. Anyway, I better switch all these electrics off. I want to save the power in the batteries as much as I can. Where the hell are the crew and the rest of the rescue equipment? Did they fall overboard before the boat hit, or have they set up camp somewhere else on this island? You know what, I'd better go and have a quick look around, just to be sure I'm not missing anything. Nope, I'm not seeing anything from up here. Oh, hang on, there was that key from earlier. May as well take a look in there. Aha! Oh, this doesn't look good. Old whiskey bottles half filled with seawater and a dead body. Beasties have eaten away at his neck and his head is rolling around it seems. His name tag says Atram or Atram. That's a coincidence because F.G. Warner's partner has the nickname E-Train. I wonder if this is a friend or relation of theirs. Either way, I'm taking his welding torch, as this is exactly what I need to conduct repairs on the Moby Dead. It looks like it's being used, but there should be enough charge in it left for me to do the repairs. I hope. As it stands, there's just too many holes in the hull for it to stay afloat right now. Besides, without a working rudder and propellers, this boat ain't going anywhere. Right. 
Right, I think I got the worst of it. There might still be one or two holes on the underside where I can't reach, but I'm hoping the bilge pumps will be able to cope with it. <laughs> yeah, famous last words, Captain. Okay, time to go and get my rifle back, as well as the gruesome task of taking Atram's body back to the boat. Yeah, I know he's been dead a while and beginning to stink to high heaven, but I just can't leave his body out here. His family deserves to be able to give him a proper burial and all that. Worst case scenario is, is that if he does begin to stink up the cabin too much, I'll just tie him to the deck instead. I mean, let's face it, it's getting cold enough outside now that it should slow down the rate of decomposition. Anyway, that's a job for later on. Right now I need to figure out just how I intend to move this boat off the rocks and back into the ocean again. Waiting for high tide to arrive just won't work, otherwise it would have budged ages ago. No, I'm going to need my problem solving skills for this one. I could try giving it a push first and see what happens, but given the weight of this thing, it might not actually make much of a difference. Yeah, it toppled over and moved a little bit, but now it's not budging. Ah, hang on a second. I might be able to use the anchor. It's a bit of a long shot, but it might work. My only fear is that the boat might just be too heavy. But hey, as they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Ah, would you look at that? It worked. We only moved a little bit, but it worked. Right, let's see if we can do that again. Yep, it is working, but it's a slow process, which is probably just as well as I don't want to damage the bottom of the boat any further. Oh yeah, it's definitely getting closer to the sea. The thing is, pushing it doesn't seem to be helping, so I'll have to use the anchor again. The only problem is, is that this might take a while. Okay, I've been doing this for a while now, so let's go and take a look at the stern. Ah, if I'm lucky then the props might be far enough underwater that I could use the Moby Dead's engines to reverse it the rest of the way. It's a bit of a gamble, but what the hell. Here we go everyone, the moment of truth. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, nice one. Gently does it captain. Don't muck up the bottom of your boat, not after all this. <laughs> That's how you do it. Brilliant. Right, let's take the engines back down to idle and bring the Moby Dead to a halt. I need to make sure the fuel isn't too badly mucked up with seawater, as that'll just screw up the engines. Oh crap, before I forget, I'd better raise the anchor and bring it back on board again. I don't want that dragging all the way back to the Sawyer Islands.
Ah, now, this may require me to take a little swim. Oh well. There we go, all done. Okay, it looks like we're far enough away from the shore that we can just turn and move off as soon as we're ready. I have no idea where we are exactly, but the Sawyer Island should still be to the southeast, roughly. But before we go, there's just one more thing I need to do first. And that stuff poor Atram here into the head. Sorry, buddy, but you smell. Right, that's the gruesome deed done. And the engines also seem to be running fine. Which suggests that the fuel that we did have remaining is from the port side fuel tank. Which luckily wasn't ruptured when the boat ran aground. So thankfully there's no danger of any seawater contamination going on there. Which also means that we are now good to go. Although I will be taking things slowly to begin with as there's still some bilge water in the lower right engine compartment. Which is making us list to starboard slightly. But the good news is the pumps are slowly dealing with that so that shouldn't be a problem for too much longer. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's handy. A Garmin GPS. I might as well use it. That's worrying. I'm zoomed out all the way and there's still no sign of the Sawyer Islands on the map. My concern now is that we'll run out of fuel before we get there. Ah well, I guess that's just something I'll worry about nearer the time. I'll just keep heading southeast once we're clear of this island and hopefully we'll come across another vessel or an island that's a little more lived in than this one was. I'll just take the Moby Debt up to cruise speed. Should be safe enough. <laughs> it's weird seeing those half-rusted railings in front of me. But hey, I really can't complain. The Moby Debt is looking pretty good for a ship that was considered lost at sea. It still has a slight list to starboard, but it's not too bad. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I better start turning to the southeast. In fact, I think I'd better make that south southeast, considering that the MV Greenock was heading northeast before we, well, had our little encounter with the Kraken. There we go. I'll just turn on the heading hold and hopefully it should keep its course. And the dead man switch too, just in case. I have to admit, you do get a great view from this flybridge. I just spotted the broken window. Oh well, as I said earlier, could have been a lot worse. Ah, land ahoy! Let's see what we've got. That first one looks like a hospital, what with a big white H on the roof, whilst the other looks like it could be a coast guard station. Either way, it means I found what could probably be the northernmost tip of the Sawyer Islands. Excellent. Now that I know that I'm getting closer to safety, I'll push the throttle to the max and get myself to that hospital a little quicker. I don't really need to worry about the fuel economy anymore. Besides, I need them to take Atram's body off this boat as soon as possible.
Oh yeah, the Moby Debt is handling this 32 knots no problem at all. Thankfully, the bilge pumps have done their job, and now there's almost no list to starboard at all, so the ride is much more pleasant. I have to admit, it is a great little motor yacht. I'm guessing it was a lease, so I hope the owners are able to fix it up and rent it out again soon, as it is an absolute joy to cruise in. But it did help save my life, so maybe I'm just being biased. Almost there. It'll be good to finally sit down next to a warm fire and get a hot meal again. Although I am dreading having to make a report about what happened. I suppose I could always just say that the green it collided with something and sank quickly, but that I was standing at the stern and didn't have time to see what it was. I would hate having to lie like that, and it would make me look suspicious, but no more so than telling them that it got eaten by a giant bloody sea monster. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to play it by ear. <laughs> and to think that just a few days ago my only worry was losing a hundred grand after the company I'd invested in went bankrupt before they'd even begun building their damn wind turbines on that island they gave me as repayment. I just wish I could sell the bloody thing. I wanted my money back, not some useless damned island. Bastards. Anyway, no point dwelling on that now. I need to dock the Moby Debt and tie it to that pier up ahead, then make my way to the hospital up the hill. The wind's picked up, so the sea's a little choppy again, but it's not too bad. The snow's gotten heavier, but that was forecast. Yeah, I'd better leave the assault rifle here. That might scare the doctors. Perfect. I'll just head back inside and switch everything off. That should be fine. At least it won't drift away. There's the hospital. Whoa, I can't believe I survived and made it to safety. What an adventure. And why is he dressed like... Of course, it's Christmas time! Well, I'm about to ruin Christmas for these poor bastards once I tell them what I've got stuffed in the Moby Dead's toilet. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this Stormworks Christmas special. I would like to end by wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So, until the next video, this is Robertson, signing off.